Animal cannibalism, a phenomenon both fascinating and unnerving. In this chilling journey through the wild, we'll uncover shocking, heart-pounding stories of creatures turning on their own kind in the name of survival. It's endlessly fascinating how one of the ocean's apex predators is perfectly willing to take a bite out of their own kind or a different shark species. But did you know that shark-on-shark -shark eating happens inside the mother shark as well? Inside the uteri of these sharks, a gruesome battle rages on. Female sand tiger sharks possess two uteri. Within each female, the developing teeth of infant sharks serve an eerie purpose, as the two largest unborn pups gradually consume their own siblings. This ensures that only the strongest and largest offspring will endure. This chilling discovery occurred by chance in 1948, when a scientist investigating one of the sand tiger shark's uteri was unexpectedly nipped by a pup on the hand. This type of cannibalism is not common among sharks, and it gets even stranger. Once the sand tiger sharks have finished devouring their brothers and sisters, they turn their attention to their mother's unfertilized eggs. Additionally, embryos within a sand tiger shark can migrate from one uterus to the other. But why do these siblings engage in such a macabre practice? The reason lies in their mating habits, as they often mate with multiple males. Consequently, offspring sharing the same womb may have different fathers. However, even though the female has the choice in selecting her mate, it doesn't guarantee that the genes of that male will ultimately lead to a successful pup leaving the uterus. It's quite surprising that a creature as adorable as a hamster can exhibit such a fierce side. Cannibalism among hamsters isn't just about aggression, it may also be a manifestation of their survival instincts. As a responsible pet owner, it's your duty to understand which hamsters may display cannibalistic behavior and how to house them correctly to mitigate the associated risks. Depending on the hamster species, cannibalism might occur due to territorial disputes. For instance, Syrian hamsters can be hostile towards their fellow hamsters, and in certain instances, they may even resort to killing and consuming other hamsters sharing the same cage. Mother hamsters, whose pups are stillborn or perish after birth, have also been observed eating their offspring. Although the exact cause remains uncertain, this behavior might be a protective instinct. In the wild, the scent of a deceased pup could attract predators, a risk the mother cannot afford to take. Overcrowding in their habitat can also trigger such behavior. Hamsters, as individuals, possess a strong drive for survival, which might drive them to resort to cannibalism when necessary. In their natural habitat, hamsters can disperse to locate their own sources of food, water, and shelter, reducing the likelihood of fatal interactions. Hamsters can be susceptible to cage rage, a psychological condition afflicting animals in captivity. When a hamster experiences cage rage, it becomes highly aggressive towards both other hamsters and humans. This aggression can potentially lead to acts of cannibalism. Hamsters housed in inadequate conditions are more prone to cage rage than those in suitable environments. A hamster affected by cage rage will not only attack other hamsters, but will also exhibit restlessness even when left alone. In the realm of springbok mantises, a remarkable 60% of their sexual encounters culminate with the female decapitating her male partner's head. This striking statistic contrasts sharply with another species, the Chinese praying mantis Tenodera sinensis, where only 28% of mating escapades lead to a post-coital meal. However, male springbok mantises, rather than passively succumbing to their fate like their mantis counterparts, engage in fierce battles with females to avoid being consumed after mating. Nathan Burke and Gregory Holwell, researchers from the University of Auckland in New Zealand, conducted an extensive 24-hour observation of 52 pairs of springbok mantises to examine their combative tendencies and determine the victors. In the first half of the observation, a notable 26 pairs engaged in skirmishes. The researchers observed that the males invariably initiated the conflicts, utilizing this strategy as a means to facilitate copulation. When a male springbok mantis successfully engaged in a bout with the female and managed to pin her down, it increased the likelihood of mating, and the male could escape unharmed. Conversely, if the female secured the upper hand in the battle, the male would invariably fall victim to cannibalism. Of these skirmishes, females emerged victorious approximately one-third of the time, 
while the majority of the winning males survive to see another day. In the context of cohabiting males and females, intense wrestling matches take place, with each sex vying to pin the other using their formidable forelegs. When females emerge triumphant in these contests, they ultimately consume the defeated male. Conversely, victorious males have a significantly higher chance of successfully mating. Sexual cannibalism is a prevalent phenomenon among praying mantises, typically serving to ensure the survival of the female and her offspring. In Australia, poisonous cane toads have become their own worst enemies. For years, scientists have observed cane toad tadpoles feasting on their younger counterparts in the puddles and ponds they share. The reason behind this cannibalistic behavior has remained an enigma until now. A recent investigation has unveiled that cane toad tadpoles in Australia develop an insatiable hunger when exposed to a toxin found in cane toad eggs, the same toxin that renders the toads venomous. This form of cannibalism had not been documented in the toad's natural habitat. It only began to be observed in various parts of Australia in recent decades, suggesting that this behavior rapidly evolved within the Australian population. It is demonstrated that cane toad tadpoles are attracted to chemical compounds associated with cane toad eggs and hatchlings. While these eggs resemble the chemical composition of those from other amphibians, there is one crucial distinction. They contain bufadienolide toxins, the same substances that confer venomous properties upon cane toads and safeguard them from predators. The researchers hypothesized that this chemical was the trigger prompting the tadpoles to feed on their juvenile counterparts. Instances of polar bears resorting to killing and consuming their own kind have been increasing in the Arctic, a concerning trend attributed to the melting ice and human activities encroaching on their natural habitat. While cannibalism among polar bears has been documented for some time, there's a growing unease about the frequency with which such cases are now being recorded. This behavior can likely be linked to food scarcity. During certain seasons, the available food may be insufficient, compelling larger male bears to aggress against females with cubs. The surge in these occurrences may, in part, be attributed to the heightened human presence in the Arctic, resulting in more individuals reporting such behavior. Notably, we're now receiving information not only from scientists, but also from an expanding cadre of oil workers and personnel in the defense sector. The region extending from the Gulf of Obi to the Barents Sea, once a prime hunting ground for polar bears, has transformed into a bustling route for shipping traffic. The Gulf of Obi, which was historically a hunting area for polar bears, now remains ice-free throughout the year. Additionally, the unusual warm weather on Spitsbergen Island in Norway's Svalbard archipelago to the north has had a profound impact on polar bears. The region has experienced a lack of ice flows and minimal snow cover, further complicating the bears' survival. If you found these stories inspiring, please like and subscribe and share this video with fellow nature enthusiasts. Stay tuned for more thrilling tales from the wild in the future.